Professor Bramwald, it's a pleasure and an honor to meet you. Um, and we're going to discuss the results of the COMPASS trial, which were released at uh, ESC today and published in the New England Journal of Medicine, potentially one of the, one of the real game changers in, in cardiovascular medicine. I believe it is. It's an extremely interesting and important trial. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about it. So there has been trials and studies of patients um, with coronary artery disease uh, since the development uh, of um, aspirin and anticoagulants. There have been hundreds of trials. And um, uh, there's never been, they've always left something out. Yeah. And um, uh, what the um, COMPASS investigators did, first of all, they focused on chronic stable coronary disease in contrast to um, um, acute coronary syndrome, post-acute coron coronary syndrome. So most of the antiplatelet and anticoagulant trials have been post-acute uh, coronary syndrome. Yeah. So we have a stable population of patients, 20s, more than 27,000 patients. So it was an enormous trial. And uh, I think it studied really the two arms of the coagulation system. Yeah. One arm is the platelet that yep. causes clotting. Yeah. And obviously the coagulation system of thrombin to fibrinogen and fiber. Yeah. And both of those are separate arms. So what the investigators did was quite clever. Um, they had a three-arm trial. Yes. One arm was low-dose aspirin alone, daily 100 milligrams. Yep. The other trial, other arm, was rivaroxaban, which is a factor 10A inhibitor. Yep. Um, and it uh, prevents clotting, prevents the coagulation cascade. Um, and the third arm was a combination yep. of aspirin and a very low dose of rivaroxaban. River yeah. Yeah. Now, the doses of rivaroxaban are quite important. Um, in the um, mono treatment, uh, it was five milligrams twice a day. Yeah. That's not much because for in a patient with atrial fibrillation, yeah. whom you put on rivaroxaban. It's 20 milligrams a day. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. In the combination arm with aspirin, they gave an ultra low dose, 2.5 milligrams twice a day. Yeah. And what they found, it was the combo that won, hands down. Yeah. Um, and the data monitoring committee stopped the trial for overwhelming efficacy. Now, of course, there was bleeding. Um, the uh, greatest benefit, of course, was in this combination arm. Um, and the intermediate benefit was with the river alone. Yeah. And um, uh, the worst arm was aspirin alone. Aspirin alone, alone yeah. That's right. Now, the bleeding was slightly different. The bleeding was least with aspirin was greatest with Riva, five milligrams, yeah. without aspirin, and it was intermediate with the combination. Um, so I think um, the take-home message is that for people with chronic stable arteriosclerotic disease, this to me looks like a very attractive approach. I have to congratulate the uh, investigators. I think that uh, the next step uh, is to get it into the guidelines. Yeah. And it will be my hope that the guidelines, uh, uh, they will dissect it uh, from every end. And um, um, I don't think they'll find anything that troubles them. And I guess they will accept it and give it a 1A indication. Do you, you, do you foresee any barriers to that at all? 
I mean, the increased bleeding risk, do you think that will cause any problems? No, no, no for, fortunately, there was no increase in fatal bleeding mm. or intracranial bleeding. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of bleeding, but yeah. uh, you know, that's, there's no free lunch. Yeah. I mean, I've never found any drug that affects the clotting system in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't cause bleeding. Yeah. Now, what you want to do is avoid the fatal bleeding. Yes. And they were able to do that. So, it's, it, you know, you don't give it to normal people. Yeah. You would not give that combo, for example, for primary prevention. Yes, sure. You might give aspirin alone for primary prevention in people at high risk. But uh, I wouldn't use this combination. But for patients in whom the trial was done. Yeah. And that's a broad group, yes. Do you think um, this will translate across to any of the other uh, direct oral anticoagulants? Oh, I don't think it'll make any difference which, which one. They're all the same. Yeah. But we just may need to use lower doses like we do for yes. rivaroxaban. Yes. Yes. But, you know, I think before any um, um, pharmaceutical company can make that an indication, yeah. um, they'll have to do a they'll trial. They'll have to do another trial, absolutely. They'll have to do another trial. So that's why the um, um, rivaroxaban people are way ahead. Yeah. Because look, they'll get an indication. And I know some of the others have stumbled along the way, haven't they? Yeah. So you've seen a lot of innovations come and go, pharmacotherapy, yeah. interventions, ablations. Where do you think this, this ranks amongst all the things you've seen over the years? I think it ranks high. It's, uh, it's not the end of the story. I mean, yeah. the, I mean, it's not as if there's nowhere else to turn. Yeah. There are other combinations that could be tried. Yeah. And... Um, in the editorial, uh, I, uh, which accompanies the paper in the New England Journal, I mentioned uh, some of the additional uh, directions that one can go. Yeah. Are there any, any of those you want to highlight in particular for us today? Well, I think um, I would be interested in seeing, uh, well, first of all, I don't think you can use three drugs. I think triple therapy just causes too much bleeding. Sure. So I think we're stuck with two drugs. Yeah. So obviously the Riva dose looks like it's very good. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, one of the um, uh, subgroups in their analysis, myocardial function, surprisingly, did not show any benefits. Yeah. So maybe you need a little more antiplatelet. Yeah. So maybe a P2Y12 inhibitor, maybe clopidogrel. Yeah. Uh, Replacing aspirin yeah. might be an interesting combo to try. Mm. Yeah, it will be interesting to see if that trial ever gets done. Um, but yeah, as you say, there may still be room for more improvement. Yes. But I think this is uh, uh, a very big step. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, was there much discontinuation of NOAC? Because I know that's, that's been an issue which has been raised before with uh, NOACs that... Sometimes patients develop intolerances and, yeah, it and was, compliance uh, can, be, can be variable. No, because the trial didn't take that long because yeah. the, the trial was stopped, so it was a low percentage. Yeah. And I guess we're dealing with smaller doses, so we may see less, exactly. less, less of the intolerances exactly. as well. Yep. Excellent, Professor Brownwald. It's been a pleasure to talk to you, and I nice. think this is really, really interesting findings. Good. Thank you. Thank you.